Hey guys, today I was just uh, walking around the fertile fields of Akihabara and I came up across this for 300 yen. It's a uh, mobile power bank. It's got a funny plug on there because it's for the Docomo Foma SoftBank 3G phones. The uh, flip phones that are really kind of popular over here. They use their own plugs and it's a pain in the bum but this is designed for that and it's really cheap because I guess it's for an older model phone that has a plug that's now obsolete or something but 1800 milliamp hour big portion so um, I thought I would grab one of these because for 300 yen that's about three or four dollars can't really go wrong for a uh, battery bank with a um a charging circuit so I thought I'd you know, end up cutting off the wires and might better use this for a Raspberry Pi backup battery or something so we'll get it open what do we got here Ah, oh, instructions we don't need them so we got the usual oh, pretty thin power cable and apparently you wrap this thing around and you can kind of just put the plug in here somewhere make it compact with that wrapped around as it was but we don't care about that how does it work we've got an LED on the side and input plug and output plug so we can go unlimited power nothing perpetual motion is rubbish but let's open this thing up I'll be back in a sec once I've opened it up and we'll see what's inside here's the insides of our unit the lithium battery here looks like a standard part number it's a 103450 which seems to be relatively common I found a capacities ranging from the 1.8 amp hour we've got here 1800 milliamp hour up to 2 amp hour but um, I found a, a Tenergy uh, data sheet that told me that I could charge this at a standard rate of 900 milliamps or a rapid charge of uh, 1800 milliamps. So it's 0.5C and 1C respectively. So if we go for a nice round number of maybe 1 amp, that's going to you know, take it no worries. This is quite thick, so I'd believe those specs too. Nice battery. Over here we've got our circuit board. Input charge here is just like a through-hole arrangement so we can easily uh, desolder those and uh, put our own input cables in and then the output here is just through hole as well so that's going to be easy to easy to play with we've got a uh, boost circuit here so that's going to be taking 3.7 volts and upping it to about 5 volts or so and then there's our charge LED so that will be going you know red and green and whatnot because this chip is actually a standard chip it's a TP4056 if you go to eBay and uh, type in lithium charger, one amp lithium charger or something like that you'll find thousands of modules with this chip in it, the TP4056 it's a very very common chip, it's made by a top power and it can provide up to one amp which is perfect so we can uh, program this to output one amp and we get a nice charge rate the way to uh, program that is on uh, pin 2 you have a uh, resistor going to ground in the data sheet which I'll link below uh, you'll see there's a chart there which you can set the charge rate. If we change that to 1.2k, we're going to get the full 1 amp charge. Now, one thing I've found with these chips is um, when you're doing it at the high rate, you might want to put a little heat sink or something on top of them because they do kind of warm up quite a bit. So, uh, putting a little tiny little heat sink on there just to get rid of the extra heat does make these things a little bit more happier to uh, operate properly. But that um, chip has an output for the uh, LED. This is just a uh, by color LED and it will change red and green or whatever that LED is set to blue and red or whatever so you can indicate charge and uh, full status alright so I'll trace the circuit out it turns out that the charger side of things is just a reference design what's in the data sheet it's the same as all those little USB to lithium battery charger modules you get on eBay it's exactly the same circuit the buck converter side of things I'll draw that that circuit out and I'll explain how that works so basically we've got a, uh, a MOSFET to start with this is a p-channel MOSFET that means it turns off when you apply voltage the most common type you'll come across is an n-channel uh, they turn on when you apply voltage but this is works opposite and I'll explain why in a second but we've got the MOSFET here with our source that's the main voltage coming in then the drain, that's what's coming out, and then the gate, that's what controls what comes through. So with this P channel, it um, when you apply voltage to the gate, it turns off and it doesn't allow anything to get from the source to the drain. If you 
turn off the power to the gate, then it allows it through. Basically like a, uh, a normally closed switch. This one was the uh, A18E or the A034. Zero one H F MOSFET. That's a four amp MOSFET. Then we come into our inductor and to our diode. This is the uh, butt converter section, and of course the uh, the butt converter controller. We have our out, our ground and our LX just means it connects to the uh, all these diode and uh, inductor there that's an 8530 and it's the 5 volt version coming out of the ground and then from here we go past a smoothing capacitor just to get rid of any ripple that's a 33 microfarad through a polyfuse and then out. Now this one here also comes all the way down to here. I'll explain what's going on with this bit just in a sec. Okay, so that's our circuit. Basically what's happening is, I'll get my pointer, this is a P-channel MOSFET as I said. So whenever we've got voltage coming into the, the gate, nothing gets through. But when there's nothing coming in here, obviously power's coming through. So our battery is connected between the, the VE bat and the ground. And then when we plug this unit in to charge that battery, we get voltage on our charge here and the ground, so that's between the po positive VE charge and ground. What happens is when you plug your this device in to charge a battery, you can also plug the phone in and charge at the same time. So the voltage is coming in, which is charging the battery, it also comes down here, turns off this MOSFET, continues along and then out to the, the phone. What that effectively does is it isolates the battery from the phone, turns off this circuit, and then prevents the battery from trying to charge a phone while it's being charged and it saves the uh, the charge cycle from being all messed up with extra load and all that sort of thing. So that's what this here, this MOSFET is just doing. It's just isolating this while you've got the, uh, the charger plugged into the whole circuit. Now you can see there's two grounds. This is a, a function of the phone. So basically if you don't have the phone plugged in, this ground isn't connected to the main ground coming back to the battery. That means this circuit turns off. Inside the phone, they've got a link, which links between here down to here. So when you plug your phone in to charge, it links this S ground, the secondary ground, to the main ground, which allows this circuit to work, and it turns on and starts outputting 5 volts. You unplug your phone, it disconnects that ground, this circuit turns off, and the battery doesn't discharge for no reason. This here, this section here is just your standard uh, boost converter. You've got your inductor and your diode, the flyback diode, which this is just pulsing. This charges up. As it discharges, it gives a higher voltage pulse for a shorter time. That pulses through the diode. The capacitor smooths it out, and we get our 5 volts coming out. The diode is just so that we don't get any backflow. It's only going in one direction. And this here through the uh, LX. It's monitoring how much voltage is actually getting out, the, the size of the pulses, and it, it adjusts its duty cycle and whatnot to um, make sure that the voltage coming out is actually 5 volts and not something else that you don't want. And then we've got a little polyfuse here just for a bit of um, overcurrent protection. If you short out these, these lines or something, it'll, it'll save the circuit. So that's basically what we've got. Now, this is easy to adapt to other uses. All we have to do to turn the circuit on is just put a little jumper here or a switch or something we can put a switch there and manually turn it on and off and it will work fine the only problem is this this little regulator is maximum rating is like 350 milliamps or 
not much more than that. Pretty much what it said on the uh, on on the packet. And there's not really any easy way to get more power. Um, th this is the main limitation. This thing here is rated to four amps. Uh, this here has only got a series resistance of um, or ESR equivalent series resistance of 1.4 ohms, so it's not too bad. This is good for a, a good number of amps too. And um, we can always replace that polyfuse or just take it out of the circuit to get more current before that thing trips. But this, this one, which is on our circuit, this chip just here, if you can see that, I'll zoom in, is this chip just here. That one's causing the problem because I have to replace that to get more power out of this. So I've got the setup here, all ready to go to test how much power we can put out of this thing before it collapses on itself and has a big hissy fit. So we've got the battery connected to our uh, boost converter, goes through this little meter that I use occasionally, uh, tells me the voltage and current, and I'm going to a, uh, like a nice big high power pot. So I'll zoom in on the screen, and I'll turn this up and down, we'll see what voltage we get compared to the current, and we'll see when it just drops off and freaks out. The screen's a little bit dim, but I think you can see what's going on there. We've got a 5.05 volts at 0.02 amps. If I bring that current up, oh, it's a bit touchy, but that's where it collapses there anyway. 0.27 amps. That's just under the rated voltage. Not much current coming out of that thing, but there is one way to fix it. That's with one of these, just a little eBay Deluxe Stream slash Chinese reseller. A boost converter. These things are good for about two amps or two and a half amps, I think, if I remember correctly. Put a little heat sink on there, and they're good to go. I run some uh, Raspberry Pi threes off these sort of things, and they work fine. Couple that with the uh, little USB um, lithium charger. I talked about these earlier. This is exactly the same as what's in here for charging the lithium battery. Same chip, same uh, circuit topology, the whole lot. So put one of these with one of these, and a little MOSFET and a, uh, a diode just to stop the uh, thing from backfeeding and uh, you, these two can make that but with a lot higher output current. So I'll see what I can use this for. Uh, for three bucks surplus, got a good battery, LED and a few other chips and bits and pieces so might use it for parts, might use it as is, we'll see what we, how we go. But um, yeah, that's how one of these little chargers works. Hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget guys we've got a Patreon so um, check it out if you're interested. If not, just keep watching the videos. And we'll see you next time.